Question 1. What are the three services offered by GSM? Explain each of them briefly. Answer. GSM services are categorized in three tele-services bearer and supplementary services. Tele-services communicate with other subscribers. Bearer service provides the underlying network capacity necessary for transmission to occur between two points in the same or different networks. The bearer services describe what the network can offer. For example, speech, data and fax. Supplementary service is optional which subscriber can subscribe for free. X call forwarding. Call waiting. Question 2. What is ciphering? Why do we need it? Name the algorithms used in it. Answer. The purpose of ciphering is to encode the burst so that it cannot be interpreted by any device other than the intended receiver. The ciphering algorithm in GSM is called the A5 algorithm. It does not add bits to the burst meaning that the input and output to the ciphering process is the same as the input. Question 3. What is equalization? Why do we need it? Answer. Adaptive equalization is a solution specifically designed to counteract the problem of time dispersion. It works as follows. A set of predefined known bit patterns exist known as training sequences. These are known to the BTS and the MS programmed at manufacture. The BTS instructs the MS to include one of these in its transmissions to the BTS. The MS includes the training sequence shown in the figure as S in its transmissions to the BTS. However, However, due to the problems over the radio path, some bits may be distorted. The BTS receives the transmission from the MS and examines the training sequence within it. The BTS compares the received training sequence with the training sequence which it had instructed the MS to use. If there are differences between the two, it can be assumed that the problems in the radio path affected these bits must have had a similar effect on the non-training sequence bits. The BTS begins a process in which it uses its knowledge of what happened the training sequence to correct the other bits of the transmission. Question 4. Explain speech coding. Answer. Speech coding. Instead of using 13 bits per sample as in AD conversion, GSM speech coding uses 260 bits. This calculates as 50 by 260 equals 13 kilobits per second. This provides a speech quality which is acceptable for mobile telephony and comparable with wireline PSTN phones. The voice compression coding technique is widely used in the modern digital communication systems. In this technique, a voice coder is used to set up a model to simulate the voice and noise produced by human vocal organs. The parameters to form the model will be transmitted through the TCH channels. The voice coder is based on the residual excited linear prediction REIP coder. Moreover, the long-term predictor LTP is used to enhance the compression effect. LTP can make the coding of residual data more advantageous by removing the vowels from the voice. With 20 ms as the unit, the voice coder outputs 260 bits after compressed coding. Therefore, the code rate is 13 kilobits per second. According to the different classes of the importance of the information, the output bits can be classified into three categories. 50 very important bits, 132 important bits and 78 ordinary bits. Comparing with the traditional piecemeal line on which the voice is coded directly and transmitted. 64 kilobits per second. The 13 kilobits per second voice rate of the GSM system is much lower. The more advanced voice coder in the future can further reduce the rate to 6.5 kilobits per second half rate voice coding the coding mode is called regular pull say excited long-term prediction RPLTP Question 5. What do you mean by frequency reuse? Answer. An operator purchases some frequency band. This band is divided into channels 200 kHz to cover the whole country or city. The operator tend to reuse the channels after some distance t which at this distance the interference can be under control. Question 6. What is the difference between synthesized frequency hopping and baseband frequency hopping? Answer. In baseband hopping, the transmitter will change its frequency on frame basis. In synthesizer hopping, the transmitter will change its frequency on time slot basis. That is why they also said it is fast hopping. Question 7. What is DTX? Why it is used? Answer. Discontinuous transmission. DTX is a mechanism which allows the radio transmitter to be switched off most of the time during speech pauses. DTX may be applied independently to each direction so that the control of DTX must take into account two components, the uplink mode, the downlink mode. DTX can be enabled or disabled for the uplink and or downlink mode on a per cell basis. Reasons for DTX when DTX is applied 
actual transmission on the radio path is reduced. This will cause a decrease of the interference level in co-channel cells using the same frequency. Another advantage will appear when using DTX in the uplink mode. It saves battery power for the mobile station. However, a disadvantage of the DTX mode is that it slightly deteriorates the quality of transmission. Note that transmitting in DTX mode does not save time slots on the air interface. Question 8. What is DRX? Why do we need it? Answer. Discontinuous reception is method used to conserve power at the MIS. The paging channel used by the BTS to signal an incoming call is structured into sub-channels. Each MS is assigned one of these sub-channels and needs to listen only to its own sub-channel. In the time between successive paging sub-channels, the mobile can go into sleep mode when almost no power is used. Question 9. What is airlines? What is meant by GOS? Answer. Traffic refers to the usage of channels and is usually thought of as the holding time per time unit or the number of call hours per hour for one or several circuits, trunks or channels. Traffic is measured in airlines. E. For example, if one subscriber is continuously on the telephone, this would generate one call hour per hour or one E of traffic. The traffic one cell can carry depends on the number of traffic channels available and the amount of congestion that is acceptable to both the customer and the provider the so-called grade of service GOS. Question 10. What is TAR? Why do we need TAR? Answer. Time advance alignment. Process the RF communication experiences a propagation delay over the distance between the BTS and the MIS in order to synchronize the MS to the BTS. A timing advance is used to align the time slots arriving at the BTS receiver. The BTS measures the reception time of the incoming MS burst. The BTS requests the MS to advance its transmission to compensate for the delay over the distance. A 6-bit number indicates how many bits the MS must advance its transmission. The time advance value TA can have a value between 0 and 63 bit lengths, which corresponds to a delay of between 0 and 233 ms. This leads to a maximum mobile range of 35 km, which is rather determined by the TA than by the signal strength. Question 11. What is location update? Why do we need location update? Answer. A location area LA, is defined as a group of cells within the network. A subscriber's location is known by the LA which they are in. The identity of the LA in which an MS is currently located is stored in the VLR. When an MS crosses a boundary from a cell belonging to one LA into a cell belonging to another LA, it must report its new location to the network one. When an MS crosses a cell boundary within an LA, it does need to report its new location to the network. When there is call for an MS, a paging message is broadcast within all cells belonging to an LA. Question 12. What is meant by MC? MC, ME and MS ISTN. Why they are needed? Answer. MC equals International Mobile Subscriber Identity. TMSI equals Temporary Mobile Subscriber Identity. DME equals International Mobile Equipment Identity. MS ISTN equals Mobile Station ISTN Number. The MSIS2 is the directory number allocated to the mobile subscriber. It is dialed to make a telephone call to the mobile subscriber. A MS is identified by its MC. The MC MC is embodied in the SIM of the mobile equipment. It is provided by the MS anytime it accesses the network. A TMSI is an identity alias which is used instead of the MC when possible. The use of a TMSI ensures that the true identity of the mobile subscriber remains confidential by eliminating the need to transfer an MC code unciphered over a radio link. A VLR allocates a unique TMSI code to each mobile subscriber that is operating in its area. This code, which is only valid within the area supervised Advised by the VLR is used to identify the subscriber in messages to and from the MIS. When a change of location area also involves a change of VLR area, a new TMSI code is allocated and communicated to the MIS. The MS stores the TMSI on its SIM. EMA codes that identify the mobile equipment deployed in the GSM system.